Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. It's back. QB School 2020. My first video of the year. Hopefully, you've been here a few times already, but I'm excited for this one. Taysom Hill, my favorite thing from Wild Card Weekend. Three plays in a row. Run it, throw it, block it. So many good things. I'm really excited. Let's dive into it. Welcome to the QB School. All right, if you love this kind of content, please think about subscribing to the channel, hit the bell, get the notifications when we go live, when we post new content. I really appreciate the support for the channel. want to continue to see it grow. Again, if you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the bell. Thank you. Let's dive into it and get it going. All right, here we go. Taysom Hill, my favorite three plays, a wild card weekend. Back to back to back, great plays. First one here is a little run. I couldn't figure out exactly who he's reading, whether it's the end man on the line of scrimmage or the backer. Doesn't matter. It's a great job running here. I'm going to point out a few things I think could make this play even better. But his skill set to be able to do this from the pocket, such a change up from what Drew Brees is doing, Teddy Bridgewater doing, being a dual threat, really a triple threat, being able to catch it, quad threat. Let's go catch it and block it. But right here, Troy Aikman was all about this block down here. I'm all about Kamara here, not turning down the RPO. This is something you learn when you run a little bit more RPOs than they probably do in the league. But most guys should be used to it. I bet you don't see it happen again. Kamara right here just keeps going. If you don't get the ball, you become a blocker. Keep your effort level going. You love seeing this, though, from anybody on your team, lowering your shoulder, taking a blow, being able to make somebody miss, get out into the open field, deliver a blow right here, see how low these guys get. But again, he's his operation right here at the line of scrimmage, he's kill-killing. That's what the throat slash is. So basically, they have two plays in the huddle call. He likes this one. It's basically a split-flow zone, and I can't tell you – if this is a RPO, if this is a straight zone read, I'm going to tell you, though, that I what I think is going on here, if I had to guess, now he's reading one of these two guys, either the end man on the line of scrimmage, the defensive end, or this inside linebacker going this way. But this is split flow. What I mean by this is the we're getting flow action across, RPO and downhill this way, inside zone it looks like, or zone this way, coming back down this way. Now, the thing about it that I get confused with this right tackle, he, he comes down, helps on this double team seal, but it looks like he's coming back for the defensive end. Normally, they leave one of these two guys unblocked. You're either going to get this guy running through like you see the Ravens do all the time on their zone read, but very rarely are you, unless you you know this is a guaranteed pull, which it might very well be, but again, it's just a different wrinkle that you don't see a whole lot of teams besides the Ravens running right here. Now, you don't know he, that right tackle we'll see from the tight. He ends up getting a little push in the back. Not a penalty by any means, but I'm just not convinced that this is how they block it correctly or how they want to block it. And also be able to see Kamara right here be able to, if he keeps it going, now you can tell 98 here, he's, he's a little confused about where to line up. Looks like they're trying to shift the front down. They end up getting two threes here. But again, what this right tackle does to me is really the thing. Normally, you want to, on these zone reads, you're going to either, and it looks like his eyes are at the defensive end, if I had to guess. And what I mean by that is it looks like he's looking right here. So normally, you would leave this defensive end. You'd leave him right here. You'd stay on this double team right here, push up to the second level, and then he would loop through and block 55. And really, the read is then right here. And that look, if I had to bet money, that looks like where his eyes are right there. Doesn't matter. The right tackle comes back. It's just enough of the defensive end. Make him miss. I think he probably makes him miss regardless with the stretch of that split flow. And then Taysom Hill just does a great job being an athlete, getting vertical, trying to punish a, a DB. Then they come back the very next play. There are a number of things I love about this. The play calling, the tempo, same type of formation, come flow, same type of action, split flow action. Now we're going to take a monster shot down the field. With a massive nod post, this ball travels 50-plus yards in the air. He fair catches that sucker at the end of it. He's waiting for it so long. But this is great on so many levels. I love these plays back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back like this. The, the ability to take a chance to run this post like he runs it right here where he's going to come up, threaten that corner's vertical, and then just give him a little nod like you're going to run to the corner or you run a, a go by him and then swoop. Step right on his toes right here. You can tell this is when you say step on your toes. You've got to basically a little high step to get over his ankles, and you got him. I mean, that is a massive. And this is a little bit of an inverted uh, replacement, too. The idea that this middle field player is coming down, taking the over, and then he, I think, I want to say this corner thinks that this 
other DB is supposed to come back and take this spot. It looks like their sideline conversations that they did. But again, that massive nod, come up here and just outrun the outrun the arm, really, more than anything else. This thing, we'll see from the timing element of it. Love how they, the other thing that I loved, and we'll be able to see from the back end here, is they have an extra offensive lineman in there. Look at this route. Get on him. Step on his toes. Whoop. Goodness gracious. My goodness. I mean, it was filthy. Look at that. <laughs> Look at the back judge. I can't get out of the way, bro. And then the fair catch. I love the fair catch, too. If you pause it right here, you couldn't tell me that wasn't a punt coverage or just a big play on offense. Love it. So many, so many good things right here. This ability to just, yup, gotcha. Gold shoes and all. Get back. Boom. Love it. So good. And then just this ability to give them a threat that maybe Breeze can't give them, especially when you know you're going to manipulate the coverage because they're going to be thinking run, zone read, all sorts of RPO stuff with Hill in the game. Concept-wise, though, again, split flow. With the tight end coming across, Kamara coming across, faking outside zone. Got the over, invert replace there with the middle field player, 41. He takes the over. Nobody gets back to the middle of the field. And we got this massive hole. And he just outruns the arm right there. Still able to get a massive hookup. Should be a walk-in touchdown. But again, it's the concept. It's the play calling. It's the aggressive. It's the personnel. Take a peek right here. We got an extra offensive lineman. Now, oftentimes, these plays are tough because this offensive lineman, who is normally a tight end, he is eligible here. He has to report eligible. He is now blocking one-on-one -on -one a defensive end. And this is a monster block. Just a monster block because oftentimes this is going to be there's going to be opportunities for double teams here. You're going to get double team. One of these two is going to be a double team over here. So you're going to get two double teams on these three to the right, and then you have this one massive one-on-one -on -one block over here, and that's really what makes the play. But because it's an offensive lineman as opposed to a tight end, it's a much better matchup. You actually get that split flow tight end coming across for another potential double team if he were to see 91 take an edge off. But again, he's just a little bit late because of this last little shuffle. But again, it doesn't matter. It's a great, great play call, great design, great execution. Dunk. So good. Love it. Fair catch it all day, every day. Play calling at its best. And then they hustle up. The thing to pay attention to here is they hustle up. Oftentimes on a big play, you'll see a delay a game or a timeout called. Will you come up? After a big play and go first sound, you catch the defense off guard, you stay away from those delay of game penalties. That's situational football at its best. Notice that all the time when you see a big play, you'll see teams take timeouts or get delays called. But this was so good. Hill comes out fullback. Now, it's not the greatest block in the world, but it is a nice block. We'll talk about all sorts of issues the Vikings had here. Couldn't get lined up on another play back-to-back. -back. Got guys turning it down for me. Big 98 running down the line of scrimmage right here. Turns it down. Got to go in there, throw your body in there, keep him out of the end zone. Hill right there making a block, driving the DB into the into the end zone, even though I'll say that DB had some effort issues, I would say. But again, this is just great play calling to me. Back to back to back plays, third play, a little quick pitch, get the edge, get them with an unbalanced. Again, they have an extra offensive lineman in. We'll be able to see here. They have an extra offensive lineman in, so they kept that same group up front. Get that big, extra big right here as opposed to a tight end. Now pay attention here for the defensive line. They can't get lined up. They don't know what gap they're supposed to be in because they have an extra offensive lineman. You don't know what they're going to do, whether they're going to make this the center and set the front that way or make this the center and set the front this way. Either way, they're in all sorts of trouble and would basically get a hat on a hat. Hill's right here. He's going to be able to come in and just walk this his DB 26, wherever he is. I think he's off the screen right now. The guys I want you to pay attention to, Vikings-wise, 98 here. He's got to make this play. You get this big jump by the center to be able to come over here 98's got this angle on this block right here he's got to be able to come down the line of scrimmage and make this tackle or at least collision this and then 26 can't turn down and make a business decision and protect himself into the end zone but again right here 98 huffing and puffing doing his best to come down the down the line of scrimmage he's got to sell out right there as opposed to turning it down and then 26 right here with Hill coming out of the backfield, the fullback block right here. You can't turn down like that. You got to go engage a quarterback. That's just not acceptable effort. You get two guys making that type of effort and you get a touchdown. But again, for me, this comes down to Taysom Hill. He's able to come out there, three plays, perfectly designed for him. We're going to get a little zone read. All three of them are built together. 
or really the first two are built together. You see the split flow action on both of them. Zone read, pull it, make a great play. Next, come back, fake that split flow action, get an extra offensive lineman in the game, and you take a big shot with a great route down the field. They get confused on the invert replay replace with the middle field player and you're able to get a massive play for a basically a fair catch for almost a touchdown then the situational awareness the game awareness to know that after a big play you want to go hurry up you want to catch them off guard they can't get lined up again defensively and they're able to get in there sneak in there a great block by hill effort issues by the by the vikings but really you can see how these three plays fit together really nicely, especially the first two. You can see they were designed to be able to run back to back to confuse the defense. You get the extra offensive lineman in there on the second and third play. And just really great play calling, execution, so many good things. Hopefully you enjoyed the video.